Fortville, South Carolina, so much to know, so much to tell you. Hopefully we can cram it all into this video so you know what to expect before you move here. Now, Fort Mill, South Carolina sits just on the border of North Carolina, and that would be bordering the city of Charlotte. So yes, it's on the Living in Charlotte channel because it's an incredible suburb to Charlotte. It's got a lot of pros and cons, and if you've seen my last video discussing that, you know a lot of those cons are not really that bad. In this video today, though, we're gonna go into some detail on all the aspects you need to know before you make the move here. So if you're looking for everything Charlotte and the suburbs, that includes South Carolina, you've come to the right channel. Be sure to subscribe and you'll get everything you need to know and things you didn't know. You needed to know about Charlotte, the surrounding area, and the neighborhoods that affect you most. And if you want to know instantaneously when these videos come available and stay ahead of the market, also hit that notification button and we will keep you on top of all things Charlotte. Now, I'm a local real estate agent in the Charlotte, North Carolina, and South Carolina area, and I get calls, texts, emails every single day from people just like you who are making the move from across the country or across the state or just in town who are looking into the area. So if that's you, whether it's nine days or 90 days from now, be sure to go ahead and connect. All my contact information is below. Be sure to email, text, call, or set up a Zoom link, and we'll be sure to connect. So let's talk about Fort Mill. There's a lot that I'm cramming into this video, so be sure to skip chapters if you need to, but we're gonna dive into everything from schools to the economy and more. So let's jump into it. The economy in Fort Mill has grown quite a bit, and in fact, it has increased over 1.6% over the last year. Now, the cool thing is the projections for growth are looking like about 44% over the next 10 years. Now that might sound like a lot, but let's look at the national average, which is also expected to grow, but only by 33%. So if you're looking for an area that is gonna be ahead of the curve and ahead of the rest of the markets in the US, this is definitely a place to look. Now, while job growth decreased this year, which is never fun, by 1.7%, it is not nearly as bad as the US average, which was over 6%. So yes, we did see a decrease overall in our US economy and in jobs and losses, but it's not hit as bad as the rest of the country. In addition to that, unemployment also lower than the rest of the US, sitting at about 4.5% when compared to a 6% plus average here in the United States. Now, one other thing that people look at when we're talking about the economy is talking about household income. So let's take a look at that, shall we? Median household income in Fort Mill is about $71,000. Now, in the US, the average is about $57,000. So once again, beating out the rest of the US economy when it comes to median household income. Now, that alone might not be a reason for you to make a choice to move or not, but we're gonna talk a little bit now about the cost of living. Now, this is really important as we see inflation skyrocketing. And while yes, I know that some claim it's 8% and honestly, others feel it's closer to 12, inflation hits everybody. And honestly, it hits the middle class and the, the, the lower income families the absolute most. So where can you go to the best, get the best bang for your buck? Well, Fort Mill may be it, but here's what we're gonna find. If we're looking at the US as an average with the number 100 as the number for that, claiming the average, Fort Mill sits at about 106. What that means is, is yes, it does have a higher cost of living than the rest of the US average. But we're looking at averages. The US includes North Carolina, it includes New York, it includes California, it includes Texas, it includes small towns in Montana. So we're looking at averages it's not that much higher than the rest of the US. Now, if you're in South Carolina already, let's say, and you wanna find the best town, or even in North Carolina, you wanna find the best town for the best bang for your buck, let's take a look at comparisons between Fort Mill and the rest of the averages in South Carolina. Groceries came in at 99.5, while the rest of the South Carolina area, 95.8. Groceries are a little bit higher. How about healthcare? Well, healthcare came in at about 111. The average in South Carolina, you guessed it, slightly lower, sitting at 103, so still above the US average. How about housing prices? This is where we see a drastic difference. 
Fort Mill came in at 128, while the rest of South Carolina came in at what? 77. Again, keep in mind that Fort Mill, Rock Hill, and Columbia are the largest cities in South Carolina on the western side. Coming in on the largest on the east coast is going to be Charleston. Those are where you're going to see your highest dollar value properties. That being said, it's also right outside of Charlotte. Now, here's one thing to note. If you are looking for a property, you are going to find that the value, I'm not just saying the price, the value of what you're getting per square foot is usually going to be a little bit more in Fort Mill and the taxes are better. So while yes, when compared to the rest of South Carolina, home values seem like they're a little bit higher, just understand what you're getting and the proximity that you're getting to other major cities. So if we're looking at medium home cost, we're looking at 373,000 in Fort Mill versus the rest of South Carolina or the average of about 223,000. Again, it's a difference, but now you know why. So yeah, home values, economy, they're both very important, but to anybody that grew up in the North, I am one of them, the weather is an important topic. Why? Because the weather's awesome here. That's right, I am a native New Yorker and I have had my fair share of winters and blizzards. And yes, you do have to walk through the snow to get to school unless it's literally a blizzard. Well, guess what? The average amount of snowfall in Fort Mill you're gonna find is only three inches. That's right, three inches of snowfall a year on average. That's right, and honestly, the amount of days that are below freezing are nominal, absolutely nominal. Most of the time it's warm and sunny and you might actually get an 80 degree day in the middle of January. Yes, it has happened. I love taking my motorcycle out when that happens. Uh, it's a nice little break from the cold weather. Now, one thing I will say to bear in mind, if you are somebody who's from up north and you're used to winter weather, here in the Carolinas, in the south, yes, we do get some winter weather, but it's in the form of ice. I don't care who you are, you can't drive on ice. So that's why the entire area shuts down when we even get a hint of snow. When I say hint, I mean someone said the word snow, all the schools close. So if you are of school age and you're watching this for your parents, let them know. This is the place to go. You might get a snow day with no snow. Not as much fun, but it's still a day off. <laughs> so let's talk about summer. The summers can be warm, right? So the average in July is about 90 degrees and you do have humidity. Humidity is a real thing in the South. I do not know how they did it back in the day with all those wool outfits and multiple layers, but I would be dying. A tank top is still too much clothing sometimes when it's the southern summer months here. But here's the nice thing. Everybody's got air conditioning. Many people have pools. There's a ton of public pools and Fort Mill actually sits beside Lake Wiley, which means you have plenty of opportunity to go get in the lake, have some fun. Summers are an absolute blast in the South, but Fort Mill is a great spot to be and get your sweet tea ready, sit down on the porch, and get ready for some beautiful fireflies in the evening. So when it comes to weather, I give that an A+. Plus. So let's talk about that dirty secret no one wants to talk about, politics. That's right, I'm not gonna give you my opinion on politics, but I am gonna give you the facts. In Fort Mill, it is predominantly conservative. That's right, over the last six elections, it was voted in as Republican. Now, this doesn't mean that there is not a stance for Democrats in the area. In fact, in the last presidential election, 41% of residents in the Fort Mill, South Carolina area did vote Democratic. Now, I always find it very interesting to look at campaign donations and contributions as well. So in the last four years, campaign donations or contributions to the Democratic Party totaled $137,000 with 1,591 people donating. That's about $86 per person. Now from the Republican Party over the last four years, there's also of course been contributions. These contributions have totaled $240,000 with 770 people donating. Now on this, the average per person is about $310,000. So as you can see, definitely predominantly Republican, but there's plenty of room for everybody. And I absolutely love that about South Carolina and North Carolina. All right, so let's talk about one of the absolute worst things about Fort Mill, South Carolina, the commute times. Now, if you have looked at Fort Mill on a map at any point in time, you're gonna see that it kind of has a very odd shape. 
So you'll have Charlotte right here with the North Carolina border, and then you have Fort Mill, but then it flanks all the way down the right-hand side there on the east side of the border of North Carolina. Now, this could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, depends upon how you see it, but if you were making a commute into Charlotte on a daily basis, you want to avoid moving into that long stretch on the eastern side. Why? Because it goes really far south without any main roads that are gonna get you back up to I-77. In fact, a border of Fort Mill actually goes lower than Rock Hill, South Carolina. The bonus of Rock Hill, it's right on 77. So you have a main interstate or thoroughfare to get you up into Charlotte. Now I'm not saying don't move to Fort Mill because what you'll also notice about that map, it is the closest town to Charlotte. So depending upon what area you're looking in, I just want you to understand Fort Mill is not created equal. <laughs> Meaning there's a huge section that's really close to Charlotte and a huge section that's not so close. But if you want a little bit more land and more affordability, I will tell you that the further out you go, the more you're gonna get, the more bang for your buck. So if you don't mind commute times and you're willing to move into a different spot of Fort Mill, you can still have a short one. And if you don't mind a long one for a little extra land, Go get you some horses and we've got the perfect spot for you. Either which way, there's an option. Now let's talk about schools. Now obviously every area or region is going to have their own ratings on schools and Fort Mill is pretty gosh darn good when it comes to schools. Now there are also private schools, so keep this in mind when you're moving to the area. We have private schools, we have charter schools, and we have public schools. There are many options for you and your family, and I would also recommend taking a look at K-12. K-12 is an online education system. It's been around for a long time, but uh, absolutely took off in 2020 when everything went virtual. They've got all kinds of classes that'll prepare your kids for college or just have a little bit of fun. So take a look at all of those options. But let's talk about public schools for a second. On average, Fort Mill is spending about $12,000 per student. Now, if we're looking at the US average, that's about $12,369. They're pretty darn close to what they're spending per student. Now, this has increased over the last few years, so the schools are getting better, which is great. Everybody wants to see things inclining, not declining. In addition to that, there's 16 students per teacher. What does that mean? Your child is actually gonna get a really great bit of attention from their teachers. I know growing up in New York, uh, there was about 35 students per class. So I'm not sure how they're swinging it, but I am proud to say that the students are getting the attention that they need. When you're looking at the population of Fort Mill, what you're gonna find is 41% of people have their college degree and 94% have graduated from high school. Now, you might not think it's a big deal because you might say, well, of course you graduated high school. Depending upon where you are, what city, what state, etc. There are a lot of regions that have very high dropout rates for many, many reasons. Cities are no exception. So what are we seeing here is that students are getting the education they need and they are being pushed to actually graduate, which is fantastic. Now, last but not least for info you need to know, let's talk real estate because why I'm a real estate agent. This is what I do. But let's talk a little bit about real estate. While in South Carolina, and then I should say more specifically Fort Mill, the average cost of a home is about 375,000, which is higher than the rest of South Carolina. What I will again emphasize is that while we're talking about averages, we're not taking into account the square footage, the amount of property, the upgrades, meaning is it luxury items or are we talking uh, you know, fiberboard cabinets? In addition to that, we're also not taking into account the bedrooms and bathrooms. It's just a straight average. So when we're taking a look at that, if you are looking to get a bigger bang for your buck and you're looking in Charlotte and the surrounding areas, you may want to consider Fort Mill just over the border for a few reasons. One, you're going to have more square footage, more beds, more baths, possibly for the same or lesser price. Now, once again, it depends where in Fort Mill you're buying. Are you buying new construction, renovated, something that's resale and needs a little bit of fix and flip? It depends what you're buying. In general, you are gonna get more for your dollar in Fort Mill. Now, another thing to consider with this is the taxes are also lower in Fort Mill. So if you're looking for a property, you want better taxes, you want a bigger bang for your buck, Take a look at Fort Mill, South Carolina, and you might find exactly what you're looking for. Now, one extra bit of info. When we're looking at the valuations of properties, 
in Fort Mill, South Carolina, home valuations over the last 10 years, the value has gone up by 6.6% on average year over year. Now I'm saying on average, obviously in 2020 and 2021 were absurd years where we had a jump of close to 15 to sometimes 19% each of those years, depending upon the area. But the one thing that we can say is projected over the next five years, we're still gonna see an increase between six and 8% between, of course, depending on the region, but between six and 8% in the area, which is going to be a benefit to you because guess what? Rent isn't coming down either. That is actually increasing at a higher rate than the valuations or purchase prices in the area. Food for thought if you're looking. So we've got a ton more information that I can share with you, but I'm not gonna go ahead and jam you up in this particular video. Check out the description below. I've got a bunch of links that you can go in and do your own research and make sure you have everything you need before you make the decision to move. Once again, we get calls every single day and whether you're nine days or 90 days moving across the country or across town, make sure to go ahead and reach out via email, cell phone, text message, smoke signal, Zoom call, however you wanna reach out, I'm here to help you. So until my next video, I look forward to showing you around town.